set a joint memorial 102. The secretary will read more memorial. In the Senate, Senate Joint Memorial 102 by State Affairs Committee, a joint memorial to the President of the United States, the Senate House of Representatives of the United States and Congress assembled, and a congressional delegation representing the State of Idaho and the Congress of the United States. Mr. President. Senator Guthrie. Mr. President, I ask unanimous consent for further reading of SPA 102 be dispensed with, and the journal shall be read at length. Hearing no objection, Senator, you recognize over the debate on the memorial. Mr. President, I move the adoption of SJM 102. Mr. President, I second the motion. Having now been moved and seconded, Senator, you recognize over the debate. Thank you, Mr. President, Senators. I appreciate the opportunity to present SJM 102 this morning. And uh, in summary, it's a memorial asking, calling on Congress to address immigration reform, a task they have failed miserably at. I believe the memorial is pretty straightforward, but I'll offer a few comments about its merits in the opening debate. I won't go into as much detail as I did last year. I think every one of you virtually was here last year and heard a debate on a similar piece of legislation. There have been some changes that I think will mitigate some of the concerns that were expressed last year. <clears throat> on pages, on page one and line six to forty-one. The memorial calls out the federal government for their lack of action in implementing meaningful immigration reform. They have failed to address workforce needs with an efficient system for entry of guest workers, failed to mitigate the very real threat of entry into the United States by those who seek to cause harm, engage in human and drug trafficking, and many other unlawful activities. They have failed to recognize the need for foreign-born labor work in jobs and industries that is undesirable for the domestic workforce. For perspective, currently there are an estimated 11.4 million people in the United States without lawful status, with 2.4 million of those employed in agriculture, and a total of 7.8 million unauthorized immigrants working in numerous industries in our country. Keep in mind there are currently 1.7 million more jobs available than there are people to fill those jobs. Starting on page two, uh, line 11, we identify three things critical to immigration reform. And if, number one, an effective system of external and internal security at and within the borders of the United States that is excludes from entry people who do not have lawful permission to be in the United States and then incorporates modern technology to prevent, deter, detect, and detain those who seek to enter the United States by unlawful means. Two, an effective guest work program that meets the labor needs and demands of year-round agriculture, construction, hospitality, food processing, manufacturing, technology, and other market sectors. And three, I think this is one that maybe will help mitigate some of the concerns from previous legislation, not granting amnesty to those currently in the United States without legal status. And with that, uh, Mr. President, the debate is open. Is there further debate? Mr. Mr. President. To debate the memorial? Yeah, the floor. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, Senators, I rise in support of this memorial. I thank the sponsor very much for coming back another year with this particular language. You may or may not recall what I said on the floor last year, and that was that nobody needs to speak for me. I have the ability to speak for myself, and so I'm going to speak for myself today. The catast catastrophic failure at the border is a catastrophic failure of the federal government. As those of us who study the Constitution know, it's the requirement of the federal government to protect us at the federal border, and they have failed to do it. Now, I will tell you, I think our delegation from Idaho has done a good job in trying to tackle this issue. But we have seen in the last year, since we were last discussing this issue in the Senate, that it's only gotten worse. Uh, I think I mentioned last year that I was raised on a sugar beet farm, and we use the H-2A program to provide labor as necessary from out of the country. But just down the road, the dairy farmers in Kaja County 
have no such access to a similar program to allow them to have the labor they need to milk cows and take care of the dairies. The system is broken. The federal immigration laws need to be changed. And so for us as a body to again voice our concern to the President of the United States, to the Congress, is, I think, timely and necessary. What needs to happen? We need to secure our borders right now. That's the first step. We need to look at uh, changing our immigration laws so that we can have the labor as necessary to come across the border in a regulated and prudent way. And nobody should have be given amnesty. If you've broken our laws, we're a country of laws, and we believe in the rule of law, and there should be consequences for that. Now, if that sounds familiar, it's the same position I took last year. But I appreciate very much the sponsor bringing this to the floor. I think it's time for us to continually speak about the concerns we have at our southern border. And with that, I'll support this memorial. Thank you, Mr. President. Is there further debate? Mr. President. Dr. Ziderfeld. Uh, I would first like to request a roll call vote uh, on this memorial. Two must, three must rise. There will be a roll call vote. <laughs> there you have the floor to debate. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, first, um, you know, we're facing a serious border issue, and with the impeachment of Mayorkas, now is the time for a strong action. SJM 102 isn't enough. We need stronger actions. The memorial focuses on immigration reform for guest workers, but our priority should be closing the borders. Senators, I put on your desk a report from FAIR, Federal uh, for American Immigration Reform. May I read a couple lines from that, Mr. President? Excited the source, Senator, you may read. Okay, first of all, it says there on the first line, it says, at the start of 2023, the net cost of illegal immigration for the United States at the federal, state, and local levels was at least $150.7 billion. FAIR arrived at the number of number by subtracting the tax revenue paid by illegal aliens just under $32 billion. From the gross negative economic impact of illegal immigration of $182 billion. So, down a couple more lines, it says illegal immigration costs each American taxpayer $1,156 per year after they take away the part that they actually pay in on the taxes. It's 957 after factoring the taxes that are paid by illegal aliens. So it's still a huge burden on the American citizen um, every year. And with the um, higher... Um, Inflation and things going on is a strain on our American citizens as we're we're discussing this and we must really take that into consideration Okay, we have created a problem and there is no easy solution Because of our desperation for workers. We have encouraged lawlessness in those who come here illegally and those who hire them knowing they are illegal Now we have to decide if we will be rewarding lawlessness I know that it could cost me a lot here today, personally, um, on this memorial, but I know if I stay silent, it could cost us way more. And, and with that, I'm going to be sharing a little bit of my personal testimony in uh, working in this industry. I have worked for two of the largest uh, dairies in Idaho. And um, part of that was doing human resources here for them. And so there's been some things that have been stated on uh, that I, I really find offensive is that Americans do not want to do these jobs. I have witnessed that they do want to do these jobs. I've actually hired some of them. But the problem within that workforce, especially in the dairy industry, is the majority of them speak Spanish and Americans do not, so they have a problem with communicating with one another, and so they quit. The other problem um, that we have been told or I have been confronted with is 
that we need to um, help those that are less, because they do. I, I, I've worked with many of them, great people, wonderful people, and they do want to better their lives. But the problem is, is they broke, their, broke our laws to get here. My family, uh, my in-laws are immigrants. They came from Holland and from Ukraine, and they did it through a sponsorship program, which I really strongly think that we should consider bringing that back. That if we are needing these workers, then we should actually uh, allow the, the industries that are needing them to sponsor them and they take the personal responsibility and not the taxpayer taking that responsibility. So when my in-laws were here, they had to work for two years and they had to, the people that they were working for had to um, provide for everything and also make sure that they were abiding by our laws and that they would either seek citizenship or they actually returned home, but it was the responsibility of the um, industry or that employer. I think that's a really great thing that we should look into. The other thing that um, is on the H-2A program, I've been doing some research on that, and it says that we can go up to a year of having the guest workers. So my uh, question and my I guess, challenge to all of us is why can a lot of these industries that need year-round workers maybe have two sets of workers where they come for a year and go home and come for a year and go home because they can be here for up to a year. So those are just some suggestions and ideas of what um, we need to, to look into. But I also want to say that if we don't stand firmly against this invasion of our borders that is bringing in drug trafficking, sex trafficking, labor trafficking, um, with a lot of the cartel being the benefactory of that, that our, um, nothing in America will be sustainable. Nothing, not even our workforce. We will not be able to sustain it if we do not close our borders. And so I would love to see that we can maybe have a stronger memorial saying that Idaho is going to do everything that we possibly can. And I just don't think that this memorial is strong enough. And so I'll be voting no. So further debate. Mr. President, Senator Wintrow, um, I just wanted to make a few comments in that uh, yesterday I was at a press conference where the McClure Center actually revealed data about our workforce and our agricultural industries and many others. And I thought it was very striking that in a 20 year period, we've maintained the same uh, number of workers at about 30,000, 32,000 20 years ago and today. This is a stable workforce. It's something that our farmers and our dairy folks depend on. But I also know through working with them that they do have compassion for their workers and they are paying at greater rates that still American citizens won't take up. But I do think it's important for us to support reasonable and compassionate ways to make sure that we have a market where labor is available, but they're also, um, you know, the broader issues that we discussed today. But uh, thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Senator. Is there further debate, <clears throat> Mr. President? Is there a debate the memorial? You have the floor, sir. Thank, thank you, you, Mr. President. So the first mistake this memorial makes is to insinuate without any basis at all that the federal government has an obligation to provide foreign, re uh, foreign replacement wage labor for domestic domestic industries in Idaho. Let's we get that. Yeah, uh, this would be a good time for everyone in the gallery to shut their ringers off on their phones. Thank you. Go ahead, Senator. Yes. So, at the, as I was saying, so the, the solution to invasion is not more invasion. The memorial says an effective guest worker program that meets the labor needs and demands of year round, all year long, year-round agriculture, construction, hospitality, food processing, manufacturing, technology, and other market sectors. And then it goes on to say, but it's not granting amnesty. So pe people say, yeah, we want people to be here all year, all, all year in every sector and industry in Idaho, but that's not amnesty because it doesn't say citizen, citizenship. So a lot of people think amnesty means citizenship. Mr. President, can I read from 
Miriam Miriam and Webster's dictionary, the definition of amnesty. Base height of the source header you may read from the Merriam Webster dictionary. Thank you. The definition of amnesty, according to Miriam and Webster, is the act of an authority, such as a government, by which pardon is granted to a large group of individuals. Notice the definition of amnesty doesn't say anything about citizenship. So if, if we're inviting people to stay here all year long who are here illegally, that's that sure sounds like amnesty to me if they get to stay here so the problem with this memorial is is not is not this memorial it's the problem correct but the solution is wrong here because it prioritizes foreign invaders over american workers because most people who come here on a visa overstay their visa They're, they come here and they never leave the data shows that 68% of illegal aliens who are here today, 68% of them overstayed their visa. They come here and they never leave. We heard that we heard the number uh, mentioned here that there's 11 million ish illegal aliens in America right now. They've been saying there's 11 million illegal aliens since the 1990s, since I was in high school. We've had 11. We've had over 11 million arguably come here just under the current administration in the past three or four years. So I think that number is not accurate. Um, and I mean, I, I want you to imagine having someone come over for the weekend, say maybe family comes over to stay for the weekend and they never leave. That's what this memorial is doing. Um, our country is being invaded and guest worker reform is not going to fix the problem. If we really want to fix this mess, if we really want to reform immigration, we need to end, end unrestricted birthright citizenship. We need to prioritize American workers. We need to follow our existing laws on the book. And we need to hold those responsible for hiring illegal aliens. We need to hold them responsible for enabling this crisis in the first place. Thank you, Mr. President. Is there further debate? Well, we need to do this. Hear none? Mr. President. Senator Nichols. Thank you, Mr. President. I just wanted to bring a few other thoughts into the discussion. I had the opportunity last year to go down to the border. I spent three nights at the border uh, with some individuals that are former military. And, and I had the opportunity to talk to Border Patrol while I was down there. Um, and it was really interesting what they said. We were down there when Title 42 was getting ready to expire. We went, excuse me, went down there to see what would transpire during that expiration. Uh, but I talked to Border Patrol, and they told me at that time we were down there around the end of May, first part, end of April, first part of May, that they had caught 75 people on the terrorist watch list that they had, had come across from January to the time we were there. The time before, they'd caught that many the whole year, and those are the ones that they caught. This year, they've even gone above that. The former FBI official recently warned Congress that there is new and imminent border danger of military-aged men coming into our, our um, United States and that we don't know where most of them are even going. Um, I have a friend that goes down to the Darien Gap, which is over towards the Panama area, and huh. they are seeing Chinese um, CCP from the Communist Party coming in oh. in droves as they make their did, way up did they show their ID? into the United States. Hey, Nichols, did they show their ID? They show it, they have a red star on their forehead? The other issues that are going on <laughs> besides needing labor, are so vast that it is mind-blowing. I couldn't wrap my head around all the things that I learned while I was down there. The human trafficking, the sex trafficking, the drugs, the organ harvesting. They give out pre-rate kits down in the Darien Gap to the women and to the oh, children. Oh, no, they no have wait a minute. You didn't go down there. Your friend went down sexually there. Sexually assaulted and raped as they cross. Uh-huh. The cartels are bringing these people in, and they're getting paid a lot of money. I had Would cartels chasing me around on the American Darien side. I lived in Panama. I, I know down what there. it is. I don't think you've been um, there. Following us around, trying, wanting to see what we're going to do, and our guide told us that 
the border security wouldn't go even go into the well, area. Now we're back to Texas, the not the Darien Gap. Yeah. Okay. They controlled it. And it was about a 14 or 15 year old boy that had a little walkie talkie following us around, letting the cartels know where we were going and what we were doing. Oh, I talked to the people hey. that live there in the communities. Walkie talkie, about yeah. all the <laughs> issues that they have had oh, since. Goodness. How can you, this how can you make things up like that, Nicholas? It's worse and worse and worse over time. I understand it for workers. I understand that. I understand. But Keep there has labor. to be law. There has to be laws that are followed. Lawlessness does not create anything good. It only creates chaos and problems. Yeah, I know you. <laughs> Say something And is what is transpiring. We don't only just have a border crisis. We have a humanitarian crisis that's occurring. And if we're going to go along with it, then we're part of that problem. Yeah, you are. I think this memorial is a good start. I think it does need to be stronger. It needs to send a stronger message to our government. Yeah, they are Mr. Uh, Crapo, sure that our borders Senator are secure Rich, and safe, and that things are being done right Simpson, now. And they're the ones that are Hey, to do sure something, because you have the power, the things you are given the responsibility. Right. We've had immigration for keep our borders a long, safe. long time. And I remember, Atlantic Ocean. You know, my family came over here. Pacific here Ocean. Many, many, many years ago. The Canadian border. But we had an Ellis Island. That's where people and the went. Southern they border. The and the Caribbean. There. And Florida. So the problems that we have no. going on because of allowing people in the way that we're doing it. Only Congress can do that, not the president. And, that and includes it's the we Republicans and, and it's the Democrats. We start dealing with the issues that we have at hand in the United States. We're not going to ever fix this. And if our government's not going to do it, then yeah, I'm uh, Senator to Crapo and and Senator and Rich, we make our government Representative react Simpson the way that we need and Representative to. Fulcher don't do anything. You're right. They have the responsibility. I think that we need to have a stronger message to Congress and to our leaders. Just pick up the phone I and think call that them. If we don't, call then them. we're just going to continue the cycle. And what do they say about going through the same thing over and over again? Well, that's the definition of insanity. And that's exactly what we have going on right and now. what you're insanity, saying, you're and just changing the narrative, and shifting so the blame to the president the of the United States because strong, it's an election year. Grow the backbone and, and Trump says, build the wall. <laughs> and kickbacks for his uh, steel buddies that build his buildings, right? Uh, just quickly uh, to... Uh, I've heard a lot of the uh, issues brought up about this, uh, but I'd also point out on uh, page 2, beginning in line 11, uh, reading down through uh, that section, it recognizes the very concerns that have been voiced on the floor this morning. It talks about we need a good national security program. We need good protection. We need good technology. We need good law enforcement prevent those people from unlawfully entering the United States. It's exactly what this resolution does. <laughs> but it also identifies the other side of the issue, and that is how do we get people into the country legally? And that's what this is really about. So we can pass memorials, uh, but it's up to Congress to deal with these issues. You can pass 10 more memorials while we're in session and send them. But I think this one deals with a significant portion of the issue. I think it's very clear that we're concerned about the illegal entry into our country and, and the impact it's having on drugs, its impact it's having on sex trafficking, uh, all the wrong things that are occurring. Uh, we need a better, and I think all of us on this floor realize we need better uh, security on our southern border. Uh, fortunately, we have a good neighbor to the north uh, that uh, provides us many uh, of those security uh, places uh, throughout the country where our border uh, meets up with Canada. But on our southern border, we're not getting that same kind of help. And we're getting a lot of pressure from Central America and South America because of the dictatorships that are there for those people to be. We need a stronger border security. We need exactly what this says and what it recognizes. We need a system. 
that only the federal government can provide. And we can, you know, badmouth the administration and do all that that we want to do. But Congress has got to act. The president's got to act. And this is one message that we can give them that deals with this issue. And I really think if people will read this closely, uh, last year uh, there was concern that it allowed for amnesty. Uh, we specifically say it doesn't allow for amnesty. So whatever that definition is, I just ask you to read this memorial and realize that you can write other memorials. Uh, we can have more next year. But this is a message that we can send this year that I think indeed addresses the issues that are facing our state and the rest of our country. I vote. I urge your I vote. Is there further debate? Mr. President. Senator Carlson. <clears throat> to debate the... You have the floor, ma'am. Thank you. Um, as I read through this legislation, I initially liked it, but then as I kept reading through it, I kept... I kept looking at it, there's something missing. It is what we need, but we don't specifically state close the border. We need to close the border. It doesn't go far enough. Um, and it's almost as if we're signaling that it's okay, um, illegal immigration is okay. And I'm not okay with that. If people wanna to come to our country, they need to come here legally, and we need to set up those programs that make them come here legally. And so with that, I will be voting no. Thank you. Is there further debate? Mr. President. Taranta, to debate for a second time. Does any senator wish to debate this memorial for the first time? Mr. President. Senator Drake. To debate for the first time? Have the floor. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I'll keep this short. Oh. So I look at this memorial. And it definitely, you know, it's been several times, it definitely addresses an issue that we have. This is an issue that we created ourselves uh, with years and years of allowing illegal immigration into the country to work for here in Idaho agriculture. And we've become dependent upon that. And we've kind of dug ourselves a hole. And this is a way to begin start digging ourselves out. I'd like to re reiterate what the good senator from 13 said is we have laws on the books. We need to enforce them. Um, the programs, the work visas and stuff like that, I'm all for it. Have them come in here, do more work. And then those that are overstaying, we need to be able to enforce the ability to get rid of them. Unfortunately, that currently resides with the federal government. And then I would like to point out that we have a good far away neighbor in the south, Texas, and I love what they're doing. The federal government has failed for reform. Uh, on the border and has failed to protect our workers and now Texas has taken it upon themselves to defend themselves and while I love the message this says I think this is only part of the solution I think the other part of the solution is to start taking matters into our own hands and start pushing harder immigration laws here in Idaho on what we can oversee and what we can enforce to make this a state to where illegals do not want to come and that means several different things but to do this we also we all know of companies and businesses right now that are willing to hire illegals and that's why they're here if there were not jobs available for them they would not be coming here so i'm going to urge to you to vote yes in this but also knowing that it's only part of the battle and that we need to continue to push things on our own and take responsibility here in the state thank you much for that is there further debate Mr. President. Senator Cook. Um, I, I've heard a lot of comments today about this doesn't go far enough. We need to be tougher. We need to maybe finish the wall that President Trump uh, built or line the army up along the, the uh, border and, and do something. And I think that's the key is do something. And this is something. So we can either sit back and say, this doesn't go far enough, we're not going to do anything and allow our borders to continue to open, or we can say, let's do something. And, and this bill or this memorial does something. It does something. And uh, I, I think we need to do something more next year or in the following year. But to sit back and say it doesn't go far enough, therefore I'm not going to vote for it, I'm not going to have anything, to, this doesn't, it doesn't make sense to me. Um, you know, on, on 
page 2, line 16, it says, an effective system of external and internal security at and within the borders of the United States that excludes from entry people who do not have law permission to enter the United States. That sounds pretty tough there to me, pretty strong. You can read whatever you want into it, but it sets forth a law. And it sends a message to Congress that, hey, we need something done. Could it have been stated stronger? Sure. And maybe next year we do that. Um, it talks about a guest worker program. Again, that's a law. They're coming in legally. And so I believe this is a, a good memorial. I think it's a good start. And I, I think that uh, it's ingenuous to say it's not far enough. I'm not going to vote for it. It's a start. And so I would, I would plead with you, Senators, to, to reconsider and, and uh, vote for this. Thank you. Is there further debate? For a second time, Mr. President. You have the floor to debate for the second time. Thank you. I don't think I've ever done that before. But I appreciate very much the uh, body letting me do it. And the good senator from uh, 32, I think, said a lot of what I was going to say. Reasonable men can disagree, Senator, but I'm looking right at the language here. This memorial calls for an effective system of external and internal security at and within the borders of the United States that excludes from entry people who do not have the lawful permission to enter the United States and incorporates modern technology to prevent, deter, detect, detain those who seek to enter the United States by unlawful means. That's what you call a secure border. So as far as I'm concerned, there's your secure border. Reasonable minds can disagree. Secure border right there in the memorial. Amnesty. This memorial says we do not support amnesty as, a, as the Idaho State Senate, as the legislature. You have to look at uh, the language of the, the memorial, page 2, line 26. Not granting amnesty to those currently in the United States without legal status. It doesn't say anything about citizenship. It says you come into the country illegally, you're not getting forgiven. That's what amnesty is. Now, if you were to let everybody who's crept in the country illegally get citizenship, yeah, that's amnesty. But that's not what this says here. This says if you had entered into the country illegally, we say you should not get amnesty. So there's some plain reading here as far as I'm concerned. Now, what else could be amnesty? Well, you know, it could say, hey, we're going to let you stay here without any punishment, have a green card, or whatever. That would also be amnesty. But what this is saying is you're going to be accountable. You come into the country illegally, you break our laws, there's a price to be paid. So again, that's, that's why I'm going to support this memorial, Mr. President. Thank you very much. Thank you. Is there further debate, Mr. President? Mr. Lake, for what purpose do you rise? To debate the bill a second time. Does anyone wish to debate it for the first time? Hearing <clears throat> none, Senator Lenny, you have the floor to debate for the second. Briefly listening to the uh, testimonies from the senators in the room, I thought it was also pertinent to debate this a second time, which I have done in the past. Um, so listening to the senator from District 32, I believe, he said, we have to do something. This bill does something. He said, it, he's not wrong. We do have to do something, and this bill does something. And what this bill does is it prioritizes labor over security. That's what this memorial does. Senator from District 20 talked about having a secure northern border, which it is light years more secure than our southern border. However, we still have illegal entry coming in through Canada and the northern border as well. Uh, Senator from 27 just talked about just read from the memorial saying it excludes entry of people who are here illegally, et cetera, et cetera. Well, if we're, if we're going to hold people responsible who are here illegally, and if there's going to be punishment or consequence, where do all these guest workers come from? Where, where are the guest workers coming from? If we're not going to let people in, if we're going to take the people here and, do, and hold them responsible, to me that would be 
sending them back, deporting them. Um, so again, this and, and this was brought up in, in several debates. This memorial does not define an entity. So it's a qualification. Some people think it means this. Some people think it means this. So we kind of leave it vague. So again, this memorial does do something. It prioritizes labor over security in America. And I think there's no one. Mr. President, to debate a second time. I the order to debate a second time. Okay, and it, it might. Can I ask the senator for a um, mediated question first? So then you would rise for a, a question. Can, yeah, yes, please. Uh, for, which, senator from 28. 28. Uh, Senator, do you yield to the question? Well, not, Mr. President. Senator is declined. Okay, thank you very much. Um, so it was regarding to. So uh, was the Senator going to do, go ahead and debate? Debate the Senate. You have the floor today. Thank you very much. Okay, so again, on the second page on line 26, it says not clean amnesty to those currently in the United States without legal status. So I was at the same um, press release yesterday, and they said about 35,000 of our um, workforce is illegal here. So how are we going to then deal with this amnesty? Do we send them all home? I mean, I, I guess my question to him is how how are we going to deal with this this line item granting no amnesty in the united states without legal status so that's thirty-five thousand of our workforce so i'm gathering that then you send them all home i would like to know what is the um what we're looking at doing further down the road are we going to write some legislation on that um so anyway, I just thought that was interesting that we're not granting amnesty to those currently in the United States without legal status. So that means we're sending 35,000 home. So I guess that would be a good start. Then we have, so um, to me that line doesn't mean anything to me because we're not gonna put any teeth behind it. We're, we're not holding anybody accountable now. So thank you. Is there further debate? Mr. President, Senator Foreman, debate the bill. You have the floor. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, this memorial does indeed make some good statements. I'll, I'll give it credit for that. But this situation at the border has been going on for years, if not decades. In, in a sense, it's not our problem. In another sense, it is our problem because we suffer from the side effects of it. But quite frankly, uh, to be technical about it, it's a federal problem. The federal government has failed to take the steps necessary to seal the border to all but legal immigrants. <clears throat> I hear tons of reasoning about it. It's complex. There's no easy solution. That's a bunch of baloney. The solution is you close the border to all but legal immigrants, like most other industrialized nations have done. Try sneaking into Mexico. Good luck. They'll find you, and you'll regret the fact that they did find you, most likely. Now, it's logical to ask, why does our federal government allow the border to continue in the dire straits it's in? Well, my friends, there have to be reasons for that. There's reasons why our border is wide open. This isn't the time or place for me to go into the reasons. I have some theories on that. I'm not going to go into that, no. But there are reasons why our federal government hasn't closed the border. Rather than sending memorials, and again, there's some things in the memorial, but the memorial won't do a bloody thing to fix the border. That's a fact. 
we could send a bushel basket full of memorials, the federal government will continue to leave the border unguarded. Rather than sending memorials, I would rather see us take positive steps to protect Idaho. We can't protect the whole country. We don't control the border. But we can take steps within our own great state to protect our people from the after effects of illegal immigration. And one of the things we can do is to crack down uh, using law enforcement to step up and enforce our laws against hiring illegal immigrants and putting them in jobs here in Idaho. And please don't tell me that that doesn't happen. It does. But it is against the law. We need to honor our state by honoring our laws and doing what we can to send the message that if you want to come to Idaho, you're welcome. But come here legally. If you want to take a job here, you need to do it legally. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Senator. Is there further debate? Hearing none. Senator Guthrie, you're recognized this time and close the debate on the memorial. Thank you, Mr. President. Senators, you know, I think it's always a good opportunity when we have an issue like this that uh, obviously it's controversial. But I think each time we have this discussion, we all get educated to a certain extent, and I, I don't see any harm in that. Just this morning, I had the opportunity to listen to a group of FFA students from American Falls, which is in my home district, and they have traditionally, year in and year out, done an exceptional job with that program, particularly their Ag Issues team. And their topic that they're doing this year is the Farm Workforce Modernization Act that's in efforts have been going through Congress or an effort to do something like that has been going on for years. The difference of opinion we have in this room exists in the Congress of the United States. That's why it is not an easy riddle to solve. I will tell you that I think if we did have the power in Idaho to solve that problem and we could solve it for Idaho, we'd have already solved it. I have confidence in that. But reality can be harsh, and reality can be sometimes that we pick and choose when we want to be oblivious to reality. And the reality is, it's a federal government issue. The latitude and the power we have is to do things like sending memorials so our, our delegation knows how we feel. Jim, Hopefully their Congress voice will resonate has the responsibility for our borders. Have some power and some say the in, Atlantic the, in the border? halls of Congress. The Pacific border, it's also a reality that the Caribbean border, we do need the southern a border, that that and the northern border. Group supplies. That's undeniable. If you want somebody to do something, and to say that you need to talk to Senator that are domestic Crickle, here will do a lot of these jobs. Senator Risch, we'll just have to agree Representative Simpson, and Representative Fulcher, because they you are know, responsible. Several for of the senators are brought out. That if we read not the Idaho. language in the, in the memorial, not 29 it does Republican talk about border security. Go down and it does talk about the problems with drug and human trafficking, the pressure it puts on law this enforcement, etc., etc. Et it does say that. Maybe not a, is an aggressive term to someone like, emotion. but it's still in there. They're taking the our that jobs. Is the realization that which is to say that we just shut the border off. How would that have looked if we had done that 10, 20, we 50 need, years uh, ago? And how many of workers, us uh, possibly from, uh, in this room might have been affected by from a Mexico. policy that narrow? Just ask anybody in Yuma. We have to deal with this. 30% so of all the, the, the uh, that we can maybe vegetables make some come from Yuma. Impact. Try picking Memorial onions promotes nothing all day. Illegal. And as far as the amnesty thing, a quarter mile, for those turn around here without a quarter status, mile, turn around in a quarter what that's saying mile, do that for eight hours and tell me if you can do it. So you whatever can. laws are applicable and the farm that would girl, affect those that are here manager down in without Yuma status, said, those are still in play. It's not folks. giving them blanket There's one Alabama, safe harbor. Uh, farmer now, put it, the other side of it argues that we do if need you don't more want strength these folks to come in to help in the Congress to deal with those kind of things, that's what we're asking for. Then don't eat. As far as the others, something that absolutely. Gives us There's a lot at of at least a little bit, a lot of, of people that this, can't grow crops south of the border. To help, I and mean, bring their children what through the Darien Gap. Going through with the pressure and I lived in under. Panama for a year. This is kind of I it see is it as not a place to be. There's so much disease, snakes, and everything else. And these people are bringing the their families, federal government, into Panama. 
But of course, that, Mr. President, the debate is closed. You guys send notices for him to come. The debate is closed. The borders open, the right? How many brochures you Senate put out? There? Is shall Senate Joint <laughs> Memorial 102 be adopted? Hey, come to America. The borders are open. Recorded vote requested. Trump will build a wall. The secretary oh, no, will we call don't the roll. That. Adams. The, tr- Anthony, the wall doesn't do anything. Burnt. Yes. Pierre Keith. Aye. Burton Shaw. Aye. Carlson. Aye. Cook. Aye. Finn Hartog. Aye. Foreman. Crow, Aye. Guthrie, Aye. Harris, Aye. Hart, Aye. Harkin, Aye. Herndon, Aye. Just, Aye. Lakey, Aye. Lee, Lenny, no. Lent, Aye. Nichols, O'Connor, Robbie, Aye. Ricks, Rutty, Schroeder, Semeroff, Taylor, Taves, Trankel, Van Orden, Ford Eagle King, Winder, Wintrow, Siderbelt, Lee, Nichols, shows 30 in favor with four against and one absent. A majority having voted in the affirmative, Senate Joint Memorial 102 has passed the Senate and has, or has been adopted. Uh, hearing good old correction, title to title is approved and the memorial will be transmitted to the House. Mr.